Okay, you ready? I suppose. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to I Love Craft. Uh, joining me again for another, uh, I, I say review, we're going to talk about some other stuff aside from just a movie, uh, is uh, Sandra Bump. Say hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we decided we were going to read Lovecraft's uh, The Color Out of Space and then watch uh, the film based on it and just kind of decide what is Lovecraftian. Okay, well maybe define that first. That's what, that's what we want to do is uh, <laughs> that cosmic horror, the, the fear of the unknown. The unknown. And uh, the vastness of things that you just can't... You can't comprehend. comprehend, yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how does the color of space... Um, color out of space. Color out of space. I keep saying that, too. Uh, and I keep thinking of, like, when, you, when you're when you little and you have a, a coloring book and you're coloring outside out of the lines. lines. <laughs> no. Not like that at all. Not very different. <laughs> okay, so, uh, the color out of space uh, is a, a book by... Or story, it's by, a short story, short story yeah. by H.P. Lovecraft, and um, it deals with a meteor falling and uh, the concept of something being undefinable, unnameable, um, undescribable. This this color is mm -hmm. different than anything we have in our world. And if you sit for just a few seconds and really think about that, what if there was a color you haven't seen before? Right. Seems like it wouldn't exist because we have the whole light spectrum, right? But I don't so, know. But that's that's at the root what this is all about is um, there's this killer well, color. Well, I mean, that's where the title comes from, but... <laughs> there's a killer color on the loose. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What I thought was really interesting is that the whole concept of the unknowable and everything, it's mm -hmm. not just a color. This color is like some sort of sentient being? You use that term loosely because it, it seems to affect anything that's alive, that's organic here on Earth. Uh, you know, it gets into the fruit and the animals and the people and just everything. And it feeds off of them. And so it's like it's alive, but it's not organic, which, you know, here on Earth, we've never heard of that. The only thing that we know that's alive is organic. We're all yes. carbon based, right? <clears throat> And uh, there's a little bit of it that reminds me of sort of the the symbiotes from Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Yeah. It's just kind of gooey and this, this substance that feeds off other things. It's kind of a parasite in a way. Like the Punisher? <laughs> I don't know okay. what he's talking about. We'll skip that. <laughs> we'll skip that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway... Uh, so are we gonna like dissect the story? Let's let's do that. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So um, Lovecraft is weird. Everybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> so just get that that out there right away. What I thought was really interesting about the story is he never really truly describes anything. Everything is all just unknowable or unnameable or this thing in the attic or uh, uh, he talks about the dry brittle skin, but then like never never describes what's actually happening. So when I'm reading the book and he's talking about how, you know, like his wife is disintegrating, uh, what I'm picturing is kind of like uh, in the movie uh, Interview with a Vampire where they hit the sun and they just kind of go poof. Or like like in, you know, Endgame and everything when he poofs everybody away, right? That's what I was picturing. That's not what they did in the movie at all. No. <laughs> so I think that's interesting that because he doesn't describe what's actually happening, he doesn't sit there and say, and then this happened, and then she did this, and then she did this, it leaves it up to everybody who's reading it. And so if you have a different perspective, yes. yeah. you're going to imagine something completely different from my poofing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that I applauded, um, is that there was just enough mm -hmm. for you to fill in the gaps. And then he kind of, uh, he, he does a good job of starting off this mystery and talking about the blasted hearth and I'm blasted going heath. blast blasted heath sorry yeah. and uh so that that from the start I'm going what is that is Never that heard a, of a heath before yeah, yes but oh, the blasted okay. heath well, I mean I think is, that part's kind of self anyway I did 
Um, so he sets that up. So he sets that up, and then uh, so I'm already kind of peaked to find out what the blasted heath is all about. And uh, of course, it makes complete sense by the end. But uh, I start going, okay, is this an old term? There's a little bit of old world terminology. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's. It, I think it's even better now than it would have been then because he does uh, try to use this old world English that is in itself bizarre today. Yeah, a little to Puritan degree. almost. Yeah, very Puritan. And uh, so you, that element kind of feels alien to you if you're uh, younger and you're not used to a lot of terms. Yeah. Uh, and it is set in the past. I mean, they're talking about horses and buggies yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They're not buggies, but carriages. Sl- uh, sleigh. One guy was driving a sleigh around, oh, yeah. which he didn't talk about the snow so much. So it, was well, it doesn't have to be a snow sleigh. There's other sleighs. Oh, I did not know. Yeah. I thought you had to be on the s- on the snow for it to work. Just something smooth. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, old school. Old kind of mysterious. Old. This weird whole blasted heath. What the heck is wrong here? Why doesn't anything grow? Uh, and the story, when he writes the story, he's telling it from the water surveyor's point of view. But he, the water surveyor is interviewing the kind of half senile guy. Ami is Ami, a thank survivor. You. I can't his name. Yeah, so it's kind of being told through the water surveyor through Ami at what he saw that happened to that family. Gardeners, right? Is that third or fourth person? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's I mean perspective, not person. But uh, so it's kind of <laughs> interesting there. Um, they changed that in the movie though, slightly. Very much. No. I mean, slightly. Uh, you still got the kind of half crazy dude. Yeah. But we don't really get the story so much from his point of view as from the water surveyor. Yes. He kind of takes on both of those characters because he's actually there surviving it while it's happening, but he's also the narrator during the movie. Um, the movie itself, uh, not a faithful adaption, but I, I applaud it for putting in a more, um, you know, Today's setting. Oh yeah, I thought it was a fantastic setting. modern adaptation. They they included all the elements that did um, feel like Lovecraftian horror. Um, oh gosh, when everything the, the alpacas. Oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna barf. And that's what I. <laughs> it's funny because I felt like the the alpacas um, that was sort of pulled from John Carpenter's The Thing, the thing that happened with the dogs in that movie. Mm-hmm. Which was pulled, again, I think, from this story. Oh, well, yeah, because he does talk about how all the horses kind of get that weird, freaky disease or whatever. The Which, infection, I think yeah, he calls it. Yeah. And they do sort of start to disintegrate. But see, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking disintegrate. And here they have a more, like, melting together. Yeah. It's really, really gross. Oh, by the way. <laughs> and then he shoots spo- them. And... Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they can't we've analyze been, something without spoiling, spoiling it. the whole it, right? time. Hopefully you've watched it before you watch this. But uh, anyway. And then the thing with the wife and the kid, too, wasn't exactly how it happened in the book. Not at all. Because she was by herself in the attic turning into this weird thing. And the son, what, he went in the well, too, I think. A couple of them ended up in the well. Two of them in the well, and one went crazy upstairs. I don't recall. Yeah, there's like one locked in a room, the wife was locked locked in an attic, and then two fell in the well. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get it exactly the same but which is okay because as I thought about it and I, usually I go crazy when you take a source material and you butcher it but at the same time I'm starting to feel like okay if you're a fan of uh, Lovecraft you're gonna watch it and you don't want to see what you've read right you're not gonna be any you know you're not gonna be freaked out by that I don't think he like took it and butchered it like they do sometimes when they take a book and put it to a movie I think it was just more he he added a couple of his own elements He added a couple of elements he updated it and it, it like it, it still felt like we were getting just enough of mm-hmm. the key things um, that made the story what it was. And like the first part of the movie was kind of like, okay, yeah, this is kind of weird, a little you know, a little creepy. Everybody's acting kind of strange. But it wasn't until further into it where I'm watching it and I'm like, oh. And then I realized that like my pulse is racing. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know. I'm like, I didn't realize how scared I was. I actually put my finger <laughs> and tested my pulse. I'm like, holy crap, my heart is pounding. <laughs> Even though I know how this ends. <laughs> I was going to do something. I was going to uh, go get some uh, some chopped carrots and offer you some chopped carrots. Uh, that was so gross. <laughs> Lunch is Don't ready. eat carrots. Yeah. Lunch oh my is gosh. ready. <laughs> You'll, it'll be funny once you watch the movie. Yeah. And also what I thought was really cool is in the book and the movie, he talks about how this color at first makes everything seem better. 
Like at first, all these beautiful flowers start blooming and the, yeah. like he talks about the tomatoes are big and ripe and the peaches fruit. and everything. Yeah. And so at first it's kind of like, whoa, okay, this is cool. Or something from outer space made everything better, but then it's not. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, it looks beautiful on the outside, but, but it's, it's hollow rot and rotten on the inside. Yeah. 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 Um, I also just found, and I watched before you came over, um, a German version uh, that's more of a faithful adaption on Tubi. And one of the things they got right, it, it's in German, by the way, so... Uh, subtitles? Y y no, not subtitles. Oh! <laughs> but if you want, if you read the book and then you turn around and watch it, you'll know exactly what's going on. Um, one of the things they did right was doing it in black and white and only the color from space was Was color. actually color. Yeah. And I felt that was uh, one of the things they did right. But in, in watching that, I did realize that, yeah, it's a great idea to actually change things up because I just felt like I was reading the book over. Right. And But when I watched the Nicolas Cage movie, I didn't know what was going to happen next exactly, and so it was a, a great thrill and surprise. I like what they did at the end with the daughter, too, how she kind of became like this conduit, and you could see this alien landscape. Yeah. That was really cool. Cause, and that's what I was talking about, that whole, you know, it's a some sort of sentient being, even though it's not anything that we know about. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, uh, have you ever read Bruce Coville? No. He's kind of like a young adult writer, but he did like, uh, My How Teacher is, is an Alien. Oh, gosh, I read these books when I was a kid. Like, he's like in his 50s or 60s, Oh, I think. then he's not a young adult. Writer. No, he writes young adult stuff. <laughs> You're such a Anyway, uh, and he he brought up something like that in some of his books about how like you know the captain that, of this spaceship that they're on is a crystal, like a sentient crystal, and awesome. the humans are all just like, what? How can you even do that? But you know we don't we don't know just because we are all carbon based organic beings doesn't mean that has to be what's out there. Well, you're human. I haven't admitted to anything. Okay, <laughs> we're not gonna go there. Um, I, what's funny is I. It, I realize as I'm uh, watching um, or reading the, the story that um, Lovecraftian horror has become so ingrained in our uh, culture um, that I, as a comic book writer, have done some projects where, um, and I've never read the story before yesterday, Man. but like uh, 10 years ago I wrote a story that is so similar to this was an asteroid that falls, it has a mm -hmm. sentient being inside, it uh, possesses a person and feeds off of the uh, inhabitants of this planet. So you plagiarize without even knowing? I plagiarized it without even, that's exactly <laughs> what I, I wasn't, when I read it, I, I wasn't like, oh, that inspired me and I didn't even realize it. I was like, I straight ripped that off and didn't even, <laughs> and didn't even read know. the story. Well, they say there are no original ideas. And this was a perfect example for me. Um, so, um, Anything else? I do. We. I guess we'll recommend that you read the story um, to get your own idea to first. Try own idea because you want to have your own visuals. Yes. I'm a very visual person, so what I'm visualizing was not what Richard Stanley visualized in the movie. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, Nicolas Cage looks terrible. Oh my gosh. I was like, he looks so old and awful. <laughs> anyway. That's but, just. I but have, he has alpacas. He has alpacas. Those are alpacas. And they're expensive. And they're expensive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you can milk them.